The Sign of the Times, episode 612, from this undisclosed room. Undisclosed room, there's a kitchenette. Imagine if the cooks that were supposed to be on Cook's Day all converged to make a big brunch, there'd be almost no room at all. I don't think you could even fit the CPW janitor in here, and he was the smallest of them. It'd be a tight fit just for him to be cooking in here. Barely enough room for my coffee pot, which fixed this cup of coffee, which was lovingly given to me by the retired Buddy Highway. He retired for like the 18th time. He's trying to catch Tex Thompson. He's desperately trying to get to that record. He's nearly there. The coffee's serviceable. And for Beast Barnett, here is a plant. It's right here. Beast will be able to tell us what this plant is. He'll know precisely. He'll say, wait, I know that plant. And he'll tell us the scientific name for it, I'm pretty sure. He's a botany expert. Coach Mike Jones probably sat on his chair, inching towards the edge of it in anticipation of learning what specific plant type this is, knowing full well that Beast Barnett will know. For the people that love the snaps, one second while you make the dive here. There's Chicken Bob. Chicken Bob was taking a nap. He was, but now he's up. Chicken Bob might be able to cook something in this kitchenette, but it'd be a tight fit even for Chicken Bob. It's a small kitchenette. Look at this. There's like two feet of floor space there. How are you supposed to cook in those conditions? Book I got for QT out of a little free library. Catherwood. It's by Marley Yeomans. I don't know if Beast Barnett has ever read this book, but if he has, he might be able to do a book report on it as well. I'd say you could do that after he tells us the name of this plant. Book I'm currently reading, Baseball's Leading Lady, F.M. Manley, and the Rise and Fall of the Negro Leagues. It's by Andrea Williams. Not too bad so far. Not too bad. Maybe Count Grog has read it. I don't know. He might have. The J.B. Moonshine t-shirt. J.B. Moonshine finally coming back to action to defend his CPW heavyweight title. He took like a year off of it. He thought he was a modern day Roman Reigns. I don't know what he was thinking. He shows up like once every year to defend the title. Calls himself the fightingest champion, the longest reigning. I don't know. I don't know. His cousin, Jameson, also a champion at CPW, though. Imagine if they teamed up and they had a combined 7,833 range with eight successful title defenses between the two of them. My Outback Jack trading card. Outback Jack, probably sad that Killer Com passed away a little bit. That was his greatest rival. His greatest rival. Demon and Bunny Coffee. It's a delicious coffee. Not like this, which is just serviceable. No offense meant to Buddy Highway, but it's just serviceable. Not on the level of Demon and Bunny. Members of Team Bad, and he's not a single good knee in that whole bunch. Another proud member, Casey Carlisle, announcing her official retirement. She'll probably be back fairly soon. She might be chasing after Tex Thompson and Buddy Highway. Two years from now, she might be on her 18th retirement. We don't know. CaseyCarlisle.com closed down, but if you had acted in time, you could have got a bunch of those, like QT's hopes and dreams would have done. QT has one. If you're smaller, you could have got some of those. They would have been less intimidating for you. Those were available. CaseyCarlisle.com had those. You could have picked some of those up. If you were a fan of titles, that would have been a great one for you. If you were old enough, 
Those would have been really nice for you to get if you were in time. Before the close down of the dot com. Back when she was the NWA World Women's Champion. Another great one for people that love belts. Or if you're a fan of sultriness. There she is. There she is with her Uncle Paul. They were probably discussing IRAs and all kinds of retirement plans back then even. Paul and Wonderful Zach. Paul and the rest of the freak show. Paul and his buddy pal John Lennon before they had a big falling out. On our picture of Kevin Sullivan. Kevin Sullivan. I will find out this week if he has I Am a Kevin Sullivan Guy t-shirt available. And if so, we'll pick one up for Seymour Snot, a proud member of the gals roster, who has an autographed picture right here in my hand. Old Ken Hamlin throwing a rock through the McDonald's like he's a modern-day Ken Patera. Old Ken Hamlin might have gone to Brew City Wrestling to see the final match of Frankie the Thumper DeFalco, but I don't have that confirmed just yet. But it's a distinct possibility. Jakari Frost picture. He's probably got that shocked look on his face because he like, when was the last time you defended a title and they didn't strip you of that for lack of defenses? Jakari probably shocked. More recent CAC program, but not the most current because Keith Ryan forgot to get my copy. He looked, he said, but couldn't find it. They had to have them. They make the things. Older CAC program proving the coach did not forget my program. Coach got me the program. RWA Flyer. I will be at the next RWA show, which is hours from right now. Draven Vargas will probably be there. Hopefully someone will arm drag him because he takes the best arm drag in the entire wrestling industry. You throw any name out there, past or present, biggest stage possible, down to the tiniest of independents. Graven Vargas takes a better arm drag than they do. The Twitter slash X where you can follow me, but not literally. Much like Seattle Sports Union does. Much like Rogue Wrestling Attractions does. They follow me on there, but I don't look over and there they are hiding in that tiny sink. You don't see Kenny Huffman hopping out saying, It's me, Rogue Wrestling Attractions promoter. Although we could. Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube, which you may be watching right now. Hopefully you subscribe, but otherwise Stompin' Steve's going to get the sneezy head. He's going to say, I remember back in early May. Eh, eh, chew. Nobody wants that. The pamphlet for the sign of the times. Every show needs a pamphlet. Otherwise you have nothing. You can ask Dave Turner. He'll confirm that. This week, a busy week. If I can get out of this tiny little kitchen area with some of this Buddy Highway coffee that he gifted to me. Sunday on Turnbuckle Turmoil, we have Charlie Bravo. Blog Talk Radio finally got everything fixed. The engineers finally solved the problem. We're back in business. Everything's good to go. Charlie Bravo on Sunday. Coach Mike Jones probably rapidly writing down questions asking Charlie Bravo, if he's related to Dino Bravo, or independent star Carly Bravo. Beast Barnett probably pacing around his room, waiting for the results of that question. Monday, eh, pretty much looking free. Tuesday, not much going on. Wednesday, maybe I'll watch some old episodes of, of What's Happening. That was a good one. Had Rerun and Dwayne and Raj. Shirley was on there. On Thursday. Not too much going on. Next Friday on the show we have King Kalua. He's been around for many, many years. Has wrestled all over the world. Many countries, many states. I met him at Gouge. We were on the same Gouge show. In fact, we were. But to review... From this undisclosed room with a small little kitchenette, even though they got the dolphin door handle knobs, it doesn't change the fact that this thing a little bit small. Look at this magic chef. Is that what happens 
when Chef comes out doing magic tricks in his entrance. I mean, he was on the cooking show too. Maybe he's been to this very kitchen. That's why he had to drop all that weight because he couldn't fit in the thing. He had to get smaller to move around. I don't know. But Sunday, that's when we have Charlie Bravo. He's from PNPW there in Astoria, Oregon. That's where he predominantly wrestles. He's wrestled Troy Prescott even. Monday, pretty open. Tuesday, I got nothing. Wednesday, maybe I'll watch some What's Happening. I'm going to guess Coach Mike Jones' all-time favorite episode was the one where they tried to bootleg the Doobie Brothers concert for a criminal and got caught because Rerun jumped up to dance and the tape recorder fell out of his jacket and everyone in that entire stadium just turned and looked at Rerun, including the band. On Friday, on Thursday rather, that's when I'm also free. Not too much going on. But Friday, that's when we have King Kalua. King Kalua wrestles a lot in the, uh, the Pennsylvania area. He's been everywhere. Wrestled in Ecuador even. Who does that? King Kalua does. But pretty much episode 612.